Many years ago, I was faced with a lot of challenges about trying to organize my life, trying to get the ideas that were in my head in a place of actual implementation. I was trying to put motion into play. And then I came across OneNote and I thought to myself, hey, here is a note-taking software that I can utilize to synchronize across all of my devices, from my desktop to my tablets to even my phone. And as I thought about that, I recognized the value of being able to capture those ideas. And that is where the second brain and OneNote are so powerful. Today, I'm gonna to show you not just how you can use OneNote as a second brain, but how you can build clarity in the goals, the tasks that you have for yourself and make plans so you can help achieve success with the Key to Success Digital Planner. I'm gonna walk you through how you can use our daily planning tools, our monthly planning tools, our weekly and annual goal setting tools to build out a framework so you can achieve results. But most importantly, as you go through the day and you have those ideas, they're not just lost in the chaos of the world around you, but there's a place that you can place them inside of OneNote and be able to achieve the ideas that came to mind. So stay with me. I'm going to assume a little bit that you know the benefits of the second brain, but if you don't, don't worry. I'm gonna dive into that a little bit, but if you wanna become rich in that, go ahead, there's a number of different YouTube videos out there. You can probably even jump on AI and learn about the depths of it. But the value of it is what's important. See, the second brain philosophy is about having a physical space where you can capture your ideas, your goals, your action steps, all the things that matter. If it be while you're in meetings, while you're transporting yourself from one location to the next, while you're sitting at your desk, or maybe while you're in a space where you're just kind of having time to yourself. And these ideas are what make your potential great, but executing them is where you're able to achieve the result. And so many people get hung up on that. They kind of fail to capture it so that when they get into a mode of like determining what to do next and make plans for their day and their week or even their look at their annualized goals, those ideas are out of frame. They're not all there. So the second brain is really a place where you can kind of harbor all that and kind of put it in motion. So I'm a big fan of OneNote for that reason because like I said, it is something that synchronizes across all these different devices. So you can have it in your tablet, you can access it from your phone, or you can even plug in those ideas from your desktop and even the online platform. So when we developed the Key to Success Planner, it was important to know that capturing the ideas, the goals, the tasks that you want to achieve is just as important as being able to execute the schedule, being able to determine what matters most with the daily key three. So we have four different ways that I'm going to show you how you can use the planning system to really encompass that second brain mentality and being able to implement it across your daily scheduling. But before I do that, I want to share a little advice with you. See, a lot of people that use schedulers and different tools like that, even those that use this paper and write out a to-do list, what you're doing is you're creating a list. And yes, you are managing that. But are you really taking the time to look at that task list, all those different goals, and recognize what is the priority, what matters most, what's most important to you? And if you do that, you're gonna recognize that those are the things that are gonna unlock your potential. And for us, that is the key to your success. Those are the daily key three. The daily key three are the things that you choose each and every day that are gonna make the biggest impact on your day. They're gonna be what matters most to your success. And they should give you the confidence and clarity to feel successful at the end of the day because you are able to complete them. But how do we determine what they are? On every single daily page, there is this planning board across the top. This is your place of capture. Now, if it be in the day, or if it be in the next day, I want you to look at this space as a place 
to forward plan. As you're going through today's events, you might say, hey, this is something I have to do tomorrow. And I want you to jot it down. That might be a task or a goal. It doesn't necessarily have a place in your schedule yet, but it's something that you're capturing. And that's how that looks on the daily page. Now, when you're looking at your daily page, I'm gonna do in another video the importance of planning and how planning works. I even have a video that you can see right here that shows you how you can entirely use OneNote. But I wanna talk briefly about what it means to actually go about a schedule. We make commitments to be at meetings, to be on calls, but are you committing time each and every day so you can accomplish the things that matter most? I have two different things that I do. I create a block of time called flex, and flex time is a space in which I allow myself to work on random tasks, usually 15 minutes or less, or to take on new tasks or projects that might come in at the request of customers, other coworkers, or even relationships in my family. The other thing I do is I plan office time or dedicated alone time. And this is the time where I'm tackling what matters most. I'm unlocking my potential with those daily key three. So doing this, looking at that planning board, capturing those ideas, identifying the daily key three is going to give you that clarity to be able to achieve the results that you want to achieve. But what does this look like on a weekly basis? So when we look at our weekly planning page, if you ever heard of the method getting things done, it's about organizing everything you have to do, again, capturing your task, your goals, bringing into light what matters most, having clarity on it, and being able to put those in a place of saying, hey, this is what is most critical, this is what is not as critical, this is what I need to do now, because it's either a deadline's tied to it, it's a hard to complete task, or it's an emergency. And sometimes those things, until we get them off our plate, we really can't focus on all the other things that are priorities, the things that we're able to schedule out. And there's going to be even times that we have to recognize the things that are not as critical shouldn't be at the top of our scheduling. And that's what this tool allows you to do. You can learn about this tool in the next video. Matter of fact, this video is part of a three series video set where I'm talking about utilizing OneNote as a second brain, which is the video you're at today. The second video is going to be about the ultimate key to success planner and how you can learn about how the planning system may be right for you and all the different tools that are in it. And the last video that I'm going to do is going to be one about being able to customize and integrate the planning system, not only across OneNote, but across different modes of your life. So if you're so far getting something from this video or uh, maybe entertaining, Okay, that maybe not so much, but if you're getting something from this video or you wanna follow along in the journey, go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, maybe share it with a friend, and at any moment you have a question, hit the comments, someone on our team or myself will get back to you. But what's really important about this page and the whole getting things done philosophy, you can see I have a list of things, and I even organize by category, what might be related to different customers, my personal life, and work attributions. And here I write down all the things that I'm currently juggling or I want to make a part of my planning. And that is where the capture piece of this comes in. And this is on a weekly level. Now, what I won't get into today is how I go from this capture to implementation, but I take that list, that capture board, that planning board, and determine what matters most to help me plan my schedule for the coming week. And I'll dive into that in the next video. But let's back up even a layer higher. What does it mean to have monthly planning? Well, a lot of times when it comes to monthly planning and we think about all the things that we're looking to achieve and we're thinking forward, hey, what do I wanna do next month? What are some of my goals and aspirations? What are the things that are tasks that are on my plate? What are some of the projects that I need to embark on? Where are the places I might wanna go? Where do I wanna invest my time when it comes to different relationships in my life? Maybe other activities that are even out there that I wanna take on, hobbies, training, books I might wanna read. Well, we have a monthly planning page and it has a planning board. This is the area of capture. So I usually go ahead and break this down by, again, different categories and I write down under each category the things that 
matter most to me or I want to make part of my plan. And I do this throughout the entire month. I might even work on this a few months in advance if I know something is on the horizon and I want to make it a priority when I get to this particular page. From there, I look at this list. I ask myself, what is it that I want to focus on? What is really going to make the difference? What items here are opportunities? And how or who will make the difference a part of them? If you ever read the book, Atomic Habits by James Clear, you know firsthand the importance of granular change. Making a 1% adjustment each week, improving upon yourself over time is gonna have a huge impact. It's not always about making a big splash in the pool, but making a routine that helps build out habits that allow you to achieve greater results over time. So I want you to put that in mind and say, hey, these are the things I wanna focus on because they're gonna have the most important in the month. These are the opportunities that are in front of me that are gonna have the biggest difference in the outcome. And then I want you to go through and just look at this particular month and start to dot out the things in here and how they might look down here and start to plot them in your schedule on when you're gonna take action on them. And that is gonna help you excel with your goals and bring that whole second brain mentality really into play. The next thing I wanna show you is our annual planning page, vision board. A vision board is just that. It's a place where you can capture all the different things you wanna do. And you do it usually on an annual basis. You break things out in categories about what areas you wanna grow, maybe personally, professionally, family. You might consider where you might wanna vacation, hobbies you wanna take up, things you wanna do for self-improvement, if it be exercise, self-education, how you might wanna mentor others or grow as a professional. Those are all things that become part of your vision for the year. And as we embark on a new year, it's exciting to do that because we wanna make the next year the best year ever. And for many of us, as we get into the year, some of those visionary goals we have for ourselves kinda of come out of sight, come out of mind. And we don't have the traction that we feel that we should have when we are embarking on this journey in the first place. That is where the second side of our capture board goes. And then we not only look at our visionary statement, but we start to make commitments of like when in the year are we gonna do the things that we're gonna do. If I wanted to plan out a vacation, I might write it out here, but I might also go in and say, this is when I'm gonna take that trip. And as a reason that we do that, as we start to embark on the year through quarterly planning, we start to be able to reflect back on, hey, this is what my intentions were, Here's the implementation process in the quarter. If you ever read the book, The 12 Week Year, it talks about that and how making the next 90 days the most important 90 days of your life. And we do that quarter by quarter by quarter by quarter. The planner is built out in a way where we spend one week planning our goals, making action steps, determining what the implementation process is gonna be, and we spend the next 12 weeks going through the course and achieving results to come back in the next quarter, use that week again to reflect, pivot and make new plans and make a new course for the next 12 weeks. And through this process, we're gonna gain clarity in our daily planning, have more focus each and every week and make larger impacts from month to month on those ideas, the goals that we captured. So when you bring in the light, the importance of having a second brain and you encompass OneNote, that syncing platform that takes those handwritten, those typed notes across all your devices and implements it into an ecosystem, the key to success planner, you will achieve results. But it goes beyond just your planning. You can dive into other areas like meetings. We have one area in our planning system where we talk about meetings. And I always encourage people to sketch out the questions that you have, the answers that you need to bring, or just your thoughts of what this meeting should look like. And do that pre-meeting. What it's gonna do for you, it's gonna give you more integration in the meeting. You're gonna find that maybe the questions that you need are getting answered in the front of the meeting, so you can dive into deeper conversation, so you can know at the conclusion of the meeting 
what is your real role? What is the next steps? Versus being able to flounder through your mind of ideas during the process of being amongst your peers in that meeting itself. So if you can capture those thoughts and ideas in our meeting page, it's gonna make a big impact. You can also do that in our project page. Our project page has a very similar piece where we sketch out what should the framework of this project look like? What is the goal in this project and the objective? And how might we start planning for it? So we take all the little pieces of the puzzle and put them in that planning board. We capture all those ideas and intentions, put it here before we build out that framework and determine how we're gonna go about task and assignment, who's gonna do the work, and what is the timeline that it's going to be done. These tools in this system really embody what it means to have clarity on what you should be doing. What are the first things first? What is the things that matter most? In the next video, I'm gonna dive in deeper to the planning system itself take you from a capture standpoint to how you can determine what planning system is best for you based if you're a personal, professional, a business operator, managing an organization, or trying to build a team to achieve success. So all that said, I hope to join you and see you in the next video. God bless.